Good whenever you're gonna be end up watching this video. I am Squishface and tonight's episode of the Beer Thunder is brought to you by the 49th State Brewing Company, Tiger's Blood Sour. And honestly, like the, the artwork on the can looked really cool. It's a tiger, it, lo it looks cool as shit. It's called Tiger's Blood, and I thought it'd be I thought it would be cool, and it's uh very, very it is very, 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 very mid. And we're gonna be talking about War Thunder Sim, which is a game mode that's very, very mid, but to start out with, let's read off of the back of the can because I think it's really, really kind of funny. And uh, this is a, a tropical blonde sour. It is brewed as an homage to our favorite Hawaiian shaved ice flavor of the same name. Yeah, they, they messed up with uh, it's brewed as an homage, not brewed as a homage. That's that's bad English. That's not, it's pretty, pretty bad, but uh, it, it's the, the shaved ice flavor. Tiger's Blood Sour is ferociously fruity. I don't ever think that I want anything labeled and to drink anything that is ferociously fruity, but you know what? We'll, we'll go with it. It's a sour ale dripping with strawberry, watermelon, and coconut notes that shine against a background of tropical tanginess. And it, this shit's a cider. It, it tastes like a cider. It goes down like a cider. Um, it has no no international brewing units or bitterness units or, or whatever, and it's 6.1%. It This would have been better as a mead. It's... The can work... The, the, the artwork on the can looks nice. The flavor... It, it's got coconut in it. I don't like coconut. Coconut tastes like fucking lotion smells. It, uh, it's... It, whatever. It, it gave me a buzz... It, it's not complete dog shit. Maybe someone else likes this shit, but it, I, I don't give I don't give a fuck. Um, overall, I think I would probably uh, on any given night I'd rather have a PBR, which is piss water beer. Um, it, this this stuff was it, it's flavorful. Someone likes it. I don't I don't care for it. I think it could have been better as like a, a sour as a raspberry sour. It, it could have been better as like literally anything else, but. Cool. The can work was the, the can work was good, but that's not really the point of the video. That's 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 that, that's the cold open because I I opened these beers cold and then I drank them cold and they were still kind of dog shit. But speaking of dog shit, we're gonna be talking about sim and we're gonna be talking about how to fix it or how I think that it needs to be fixed. I'm gonna try to do this all in one recording and no cuts, all tabs, whatever and try to get through this and try to make it as quick as possible. I did like a pre-recording of this and I realized I kind of rambled on. I'm going to try to avoid that. I am making no promises here. So previously I made a video and I talked about the Enigma priorities list and I said, hey, uh, don't add too much stuff to the game without like fixing the core underlying issues. But I never really elaborated in depth what I consider to be core underlying issues. And this is going to be an attempt to start to solve that. But initially this started out as a priorities list. I was like, oh cool, this should be priority number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I thought about it a little bit more and I realized that, hey, yes, it's very easy for me to make a priorities list from the outside looking in, but the ability to solve the problem should also influence the priority that it takes. So if something seems complex on the surface, but is relatively easy to solve, it should probably go up where it's like, hey, it's an easy fix. At the same time, if something seems like a very blatant issue, but it's very, very hard to fix because of like 12 years of spaghetti code, then obviously you can bump it back down. But I'm still gonna list them off and like my priorities because of the things that annoy me probably hopefully annoy you, but maybe they don't. Anyways, starting from uh, numero zero, because I think zero needs to just be like, put first and foremost is uh, just fix the economy. Just just make the rewards better for doing PVP stuff. Make it so they're not capped. That, that's it, that's that's the whole that's the whole talk for that because like I've already beat it to death. Uh, it's zero, I just want to say that like I'm not forgetting the economy exists. The next thing though is just one of the things I've noticed in the latest patch, the latest major patch, is the game crashes when I alt tab. Now, this priority is like number one because I think it's easy to fix, but also it's like really, really annoying. Cause like I go to change my music on my Spotify and the game crashes and like, I have to like close the game, restart, go try to find the lobby. It doesn't like 
let me back in. I gotta cancel that. Then I gotta go find the lobby again and get in, like, manually. It, it, it sucks because, like, when you're playing a game that's, like, bad, or you're playing any kind of game that just randomly crashes, that's bad. Just, like, I think you should just revert the code to whatever it was before or figure out, like, where it went. Like, you couldn't have changed that much. Like, it should be, like, a simple fix. And also just, like, having the game run consistently is, like, kind of, like, should be, like, gaming 101. Like, I don't have a dog shit computer. It shouldn't be crashing when I alt tab. And it's also not, like, something that I'm unique in experiencing. I've talked to other people, and they're like, oh, yeah, this thing, like, crashes all the time now. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Now, with that being said, that's not a sim-specific issue. That's just a game issue. Like, just make the game run on computers. Not that hard. Or not that hard as a design perspective. The next thing, though, is going to be a little bit more nuanced. And my number two objective for fixing the game is fixing split lobbies. Split lobbies are something that have existed for a long time now. And what happens is you join a sim lobby, it gets a little bit too old, it ages out, and then it, like, it segues into two different lobbies where you end up with one where people can't join it and when they click on that lobby, they join a new lobby that is also not, like, separate and distinct, but it's just, like, one that runs parallel. So what happens is you think you're signing up for an 8 versus 8 game or a 10 versus 12 game or whatever, and you think you're going to have, like, a, a populated server, but because it's an hour and 10 minutes in or an hour or whatever, 56 minutes, whatever the, the, the time divergence is, um, because of Steins Gate, um, you end up in a 1v2. You pop a booster and you pop into an empty lobby and you're you're flying against you're flying against nothing. You're flying against bots, you're not doing anything. You're like, oh wow, I signed up for this like sim experience, but I'm gonna have like a dynamic game and like no, you're not. You're just gonna be there uh, twiddling your thumbs. That is not good. The fact that you signed up for one thing, the server showed you that you were gonna have like this kind of game experience, and then the game experience is like literally the opposite of that. That's that's bad game design. It, it should be solved. It should be something like, because it's been around for so long, should just be on the list. Like, at one of the top things. Now, next thing that I have is not something that is a bug. It's not something that's like, nobody's really highlighted it because I don't think people that have played Sim long enough actually care about it because they've learned the nuances of like finding games because if you stick with it, you just kind of like learn the, the hidden rules. But my hot take is the server browser is dog shit. I spend a lot of time searching for games that are populated. I spend a lot of time searching for BRs that are populated. I spend a lot of time just trying to find a game other than just playing it. The fact that the server browser doesn't just like make it intuitive to play the game is stupid. Like right now, the way the server browser works is in order to segregate your battle rating range, you have to crew up a plane. And if you want to just search that own battle rating range, like say if I want to search like 5-3 to 6-3 or 4-3 uh, to 5-3 or whatever it is, I have to put like a singular 5-3 plane and then it like X out all my other crews or just have like literally like crews that only fit into that. I have to basically engineer my own search filters which is dumb. It's really, really dumb. Like, the server browser should have a user interface that makes sense, that allows you to select the battle rating range, has filters where you can select the map and whatnot. So, like, if I want to see, say, um, top tier, I want to see 13.0 to 13.7, but I don't want to play on Tunisia, and I don't want to play on, like, you know, tiny maps, whatever the other tiny maps are. I should be able to like have a filter like okay cool uh 13 uh afghanistan vietnam and like sinai it, it should be that simple just like have some kind of filter same thing with like player count if i want to sort the servers by player count and have the whole entire battle rating range if i can do that really quickly and sort by player count i'd be like oh hey there's like 32 people playing like 2.3 to 3.3 and there's like three or four different lobbies that are really really popular at this BR. It makes it easier for players to find the games because Sim's not very popular. And the thing is, with the current system, if it became very, very populated, 
it would be very, very hard for you to find the server that your friends are in, which kind of brings me to like another quality of life thing. It's like, hey, the server browser, like you can put like a little symbol next to the thing or have like, you know, the friends list be like, oh, hey, join this guy's thing in progress where you can, you know, pick a plane that is on his team and you can join your buddy really quickly. Like having the server system where finding the games that you want to play would make sense. That, that, that's easy. And it's, it's not solving any of the other problems, but it's saying that, hey, if you want to play Sim as it currently exists, we're going to make it easier for you to do it in a way that suits what you want to do. Now, with that being said, we're going to move on to point number, I think it's Quattro at this point. I think it's four. I got it labeled on my, my sheet as three because like I ended up copy pasting them and like moving them around. I was like, oh, I thought about it and did some thoughts and kind of moved them, which... Point number quattro is a gameplay thing, is equalize the objectives. And this doesn't go into fixing the AI targets or making them make sense. It's just like, if you're going to have the maps play against themselves, where there's no players on them whatsoever, the AI inputted ticket lead for both sides should be the same. You should get the equal number of objectives, the same amount of objectives, the same objectives. So if you get bombers, one guy gets bombers, and the other guy should get bombers, like, in the next, like, little, like, ticket rotation kind of thing. It should make sense, because not all objectives are equal to complete. Because right now, the AI targets do not make sense for the era. The AI targets are not balanced, which is kind of, like, my next point. It's, like, they should make sense. They should be equalized in a way that, like, they're readily completable. Because what happens is... If you balance out something like destroy AI bombers with destroy a convoy, especially in props, especially with a kind of anything, it's a lot easier to destroy the bombers. The convoy has like bug zapper AA. Um, you get Saddam 25s against A10. If you don't launch Mavericks at them from outside the distance, they kill you. If you fly over like Mach 0.95, they kill you. It's a, a, a very not fun dynamic. And that not fun dynamic really, really scales for, uh, like, props and stuff, too, because every uh, 50 cal gunner on the back of a, like, M41 Walker Bulldog is basically Harvey Oswald, and you get shot 16 times to the head uh, just flying by him. It's not, it's, not, it's not a good thing. The AI targets should make sense for the era. They should make sense for the difficulty. They shouldn't be too difficult to complete. They shouldn't be like super duper easy where like they're just like oh i hit it with 150 cal and exploded same thing with like the ai targets moving on from that it's like the other part is like when it comes to making sense for the eras like stop giving me supersonic like air targets like f-86s or yak 38s when i'm flying a subsonic plane like your korean war f-86 is not going to catch up to the mach 1.2 mach 1.5 like, turning in a circle, Yak-38, because it's bugged. Like, just fix that. I think that that should be... It's low on my priorities list, but it should probably be bumped up because it should be something that is easy to solve. Or at least, like, the supersonic aircraft thing should be easy to solve. The AA thing might be harder to solve because of, like, the underlying code stuff. I don't know. I'm not a programmer. My very last point, though, probably the most controversial one, is, like, I think that we need to take some kind of steps to limit the map size and the amount of servers that are created at a certain time. Because what is happening right now, and what I've noticed when I play mid-tier, is that people that are abusing the system, people that are just trying to like bomb to maximize their grind, uh, have kind of taken over. You don't have very populated servers in mid-tier right now because it's not popular, it can't be popular, and the people that are playing PvE are basically spread out to 16 different servers in minimal populations on maximum size maps so that people that join sim people that want to play like mid-tier f86 um f9f that kind of stuff they end up in maps that are predominantly like unoccupied it means that people are getting into sim and they're having a bad gameplay experience even when they get into the games that they think that they want. Because they don't understand the unspoken rules. And the fact that there are unspoken rules is is dumb. So I think that 
if Gaijin could solve some of these, they don't have to solve all of them at the same time. I think the server size thing, the map size thing, that's that, that's got to be like hashed out. It's got to be a little bit more nuanced. I think that with the server size thing, like what I would do right now, off the top of my head, is spitballing is like, hey, if you create Tunisia as its own server, right, for mid tier mid tier jets or whatever, cool. You can start that game as a 2v2. If you start a Sinai or a big map, that threshold should start at like 5v5 so that people can't go out and create 2v2 gigantic large maps that are unpopulated. I think that might go a little bit of the way to mitigating the problem. At the same time, maybe Gaijin needs to make a system where they look at all the players that are trying to play that BR range and they limit the number of servers they created. Like, hey, no, you can't create this server. There's already three other servers you can join. Go join these. Stop trying to abuse the system so that the player base is spread out to, like, Kingdom Come. But anyways, I'm going to cap the video off. I try to do it all in one take, I'm trying to make it nice and smooth, nice and, like, flowy. I got some tiger's blood, and uh, I'm, like, probably going to go shit myself at this point because fucking this shit sucks. But anyways, that's my TED Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't, I don't know. Send me hate mail. I'm probably not going to read it.